I'm familiar with Marvel and IDW Transformers, but Dreamwave's kinda that weird middle child that virtually no one acknowledges anymore. So I read Armada, and having made a video about the TV show, I wanted to see if the comic was able to expand on what the show provided. Well, let's find out, let's dive in, spoilers galore. I'm going to be reading the IDW packaged version of the comics by the way, not the panini comics or the mini comics that come with the toys, so no jam. Also, if you're of legal drinking age and you want a fun drinking game, drink every time in this video Optimus combines with his trailer in the comic, which is none. He will never combine with it ever. Congratulations, don't do drugs. So for the most part, it follows the basic premise of the TV show. Autobots and Decepticons are fighting over the Minicons, these small transformers that can supercharge the abilities of the larger ones, basically living steroids. It's a cool premise to me, honestly. Living weapons of mass destruction who are people in themselves that want to be left alone. It's an interesting moral dilemma. Eventually, the Minicons, with the aid of the Autobots, make their way to Earth and meet three kids, Rad, Carlos, and Alexis. They form a bond, get to know the humans, then the Autobots and Decepticons arrive on Earth, and the struggle continues. That's basically a good 40 to 50% of the comic so far. The biggest difference between the comic and the show is that the Minicons can talk in full sentences and they're full main characters rather than... So that means we added a good 20 odd characters to keep track of right off the bat. And that means the Autobots and Decepticons really take a back seat. Some spoilers, you won't see Starscream going down his arc of self-doubt, joining the Autobots, and then sacrificing himself at the end. None of that, he's more classic Starscream. Hotshot doesn't really learn to become a leader. And Optimus doesn't really confront his love to fight. The Minicons are the main characters, not Optimus, not Megatron. These guys are front and center. Thinking about the comic that way allowed me to center my focus in the story. I do think though they do a good job of balancing between all of the Minicons and I get a good sense of their personalities in the way they talk and the way they're drawn. My favorite group is the Sonar Team. They combine to form the Star Saber. They're the most fun, the most gung-ho. One minicon we get a lot of focus on is Sparkplug, aka not Bumblebee. And by that I mean he's quite literally just Bumblebee except he plugs into Prime's butt skirt. While you get a lot of Rad Carlos and Alexis towards the beginning, they're the same as they are in the show. They're phased out of the story by the end in a big way. I don't even feel like they were given a lot of time with their companion minicons really. At the end of the comic they say goodbye. And that's pretty much it for any later appearances of those characters. Paradoxically, the story hasn't moved much at all. Because, well, at this point we've basically gotten through three or four episodes of the TV show. But on the other hand, the character interactions are so fast and punctuated that it feels like they're trying to cover a lot of ground to get to the end and give everyone some time in the spotlight. It's a really weird feeling. And for the art, it ranges from to I think the Unicorn Trilogy benefited the most from the Dreamwave art style. There's a lot of interesting use of panels and splash pages to make you feel the effect of what's happening. The structure of the comic is exciting and slapdash. At its best, I feel like I'm a kid again, watching those Armada commercials with the fast-paced music pumping in my veins. At its worst, I'm overwhelmed. But positive feelings hold until issue 8. So up until this point, the Minicons have a bit of an uneasy relationship with the Autobots. All the kids, the Autobots, the Decepticons, and other Minicons notice this weird pillar. It's a sort of beacon. The Minicons head to it first. They get beamed away along with Rad, and they end up in some sort of castle run by Dueler and the Destruction Team, who's been keeping them imprisoned in a force field. Meanwhile, the Autobots storm the Decepticon base. Optimus takes it upon himself to save the Minicons. Now, the Destruction Team doesn't like the Decepticons, certainly, but they also don't like the Autobots, so they're gonna have this minefield to keep anyone away, but especially the Autobots, 
by attaching Rad to one of those orbital mines. So Dueler is kind of a dick. Asshole minicons. We didn't really get to see this in the show at all, and I welcome it as a whole new fresh dynamic that we didn't see before. But eventually, all's well that ends well, Rad gets saved, the Minicons are freed, etc, etc. Except that after ruining Leader 1's plan to kill Megatron, Dueler, the Destruction Team, and Leader 1 all get recaptured by the Decepticons. There's only one more adventure after this where, well, the Autobots and Decepticons fight for the Adventure Team Minicons. And we get a neat cameo of Skywarp, Wheeljack, Sideways, launching a space laser to launch high-velocity bombardments from suborbital altitudes. You'll love to see it. Also, that's their only appearance. Don't hold your breath. But yeah, it's kind of a new status quo. Minicons actively working with the Autobots to locate the other Minicons first. Okay, let's pause right here. So far, I've been liking the direction this is going. As I just said, hitting its stride. It's written really well, there are some more nuances to everything, the drama, the tension, it's all there. And it's just getting started. But the problem is, there's only 18 issues, and we're on issue 14. So, I hope there's enough time to develop the characters, finish their arcs, and complete the story on a satisfying note. Okay, we good? Optimus gets transported to an alternate universe. Not exaggerating, it just happens suddenly randomly. He's transported to an alternate universe. Side note, we do get a glimpse of that universe's Optimus, and we see him die. And I gotta say, I like the double mouth plate thing. It's kinda spiffy. Anyways, Optimus meets Spinister, who's gone crazy talking about Doomsday. It's neat to see him, at least. But this is basically where Optimus will be for the majority of the rest of the story. All he does is be like, what the hell is going on here? And Spinister will respond in riddles and cryptic sentences. Meanwhile, in the Armada universe, a mysterious group of robots chase after a minicon named Overrun, who is trying to contact Optimus Prime. We will soon find out that these mysterious robots, which consist of Scourge, Thunderwing, Dirge, Bludgeon, and Galvatron, these are the heralds of Unicron. These heralds will hop from universe to universe, making way for the transdimensional devourer of worlds known as Unicron. Unicron is who Overrun is trying to contact Optimus Prime about to warn him. Okay, pause. So Unicron as a multiversal singularity. There's a whole other topic of discussion though for another day, but really quickly, Hasbro had this idea that every Unicron was the same Unicron. Eventually, that was changed to let every Unicron be specific to their own universe if they had one. It would allow the creators more freedom. So, the whole plot gets taken over by this multiverse story, which simultaneously goes so quickly, yet so slowly, like the comic has been so far. My eyes glaze over it because it's not even a multiverse plot that feels satisfying. The heralds are dispatched very quickly, and the conflict is so haphazardly resolved. Galvatron will appear for a couple scenes, then is killed immediately. This final quarter is just so fuzzy to me. There's some cool stuff here or there, I guess, like Bludgeon fighting Jetfire and some of the Cybertron Autobots, a little nod to Rid 2001, Beast Wars, and other continuities. It's cute. Optimus and Jetfire get new paint jobs and combine the only super mode in this entire comic, by the way. But when Unicron does eventually come to the Armada world, he doesn't transform at all. The fight is really fast. The only other notable thing is that Megatron tries to quote unquote take the power for himself by striking a deal with Unicron. I have no idea what this whole thing is about, but he gets killed by Hotshot and the other Autobots and gets hurled into Unicron and they both die together. And when I say this story wraps up quickly, I mean two pages of Jet Optimus and some others shooting the Minicons using the Minicon Matrix, and then boom, Unicron is dead, and we're done. The story felt like it hit a halfway point though, but then was like, wait, there's four more issues. So it tried to get to Energon as fast as possible. 
And what we ended up with is an undercooked turkey of a story. Is it really over? Yes. Yes, it is. So even though I was disappointed in this comic, Transformers Armada, both the comic and the TV show, while imperfect in their execution, showed a promise and I'd honestly love for Hasbro to take another crack at it, or at least develop and explore that moral dilemma I explained before with the Minicons. It has potential and I'd love to see it fully realized properly. Yeah.